Hello fellow beings of Middle-earth and finally welcome to the Dwarves of Erebor campaign. Today we're going to start our adventure with the Dwarves of Erebor. We are going to play very aggressively today and it's going to happen a lot of actions. My goal is to exterminate Gundabad within this or the next episode. So you're going to see a lot of nice action. But first of all, let's see our victory conditions. So I'm not going to play the short, I'm going to play the long one. And that means we'll have to hold a lot of regions. In general, it means we have to eliminate the factions Easterlings of Ruin, Goblins of Moria, Orcs of Gundabad, and the Remnants of Angmar. And this is going to be a very interesting uh, campaign. I haven't been playing the Dwarves on this channel before. We played all the other races, so it's definitely going to be a nice ride. Alright, so I think we can just go at it already. Why not? So as I said, we're going to play aggressively. And I'm just going to go straight for Gundabad's settlements, which is going to be quite interesting. So we're going to see some nice action today. And I'm also going to show you how you can really start off your campaign very successfully. Like just having a very nice economy from the start is, as always, a very vital part of the campaign. You're setting the standard for the rest of your campaign. And if your start is struggling, you're going to struggle the rest of the campaign. However, if you're doing very good in the early game, you're going to do much better. Alright, so for you, for those of you who are quite new to the mod, just read this. It's quite important. I would definitely recommend that. Now, I'm not going to read through this, but I'm going to just scroll very quickly through and you can just pause. So you can read it if you want. All right, military report. All right, this is just a lot of not important messages. And we are going to take a look at what we are going to start. So first of all, I'm going to lower the tax rate or actually this place cannot upgrade and it actually brings us a lot more money. I think I'm going to go on the normal tax rate just to have a little bit of growth because our early game is going to suffer and therefore we want a high tax rate. So I'm actually going to do high tax rate at the moment, but I'm going to s change that in not too long. Let's build the mines. Our My long term plan is just simply to, let's see here. We're going to get the mining complex and it's just a ridiculous amount of money that this thing can make. And it will also increase the population and culture. It's just a very very good uh, building for the dwarves. So I'm not going to go for the miners quarters even though that's a good building because the mines is going to bring in even more than the upkeep is going to be able to bring in. So we're actually just going to rush out Dane already and also let's set up our watchtower. Gimli is going to go inside Erebor as well as Gloin just to get free upkeep. These guys are going to follow right after. And we're going to recruit some nice units. We can also recruit some mercenaries in the next turn. But I'm not going to do it this turn because we're going to save some money just by not doing that. And this is our second settlement, Kirith Gathol, the Iron Hills. We're also going to go for the mines here. Now we could actually raise the tax quite heavily right here. But I am going to send up Thorin because he is causing us a... Huge, a huge amount of money every turn. It's yeah, it's definitely going to be worth actually sending him away. Even though the high tax rate will give us some benefits, we are going to send him away. We're going to build a watchtower, and we're just going to send him straight to Erebor to get the free upkeep. Rune usually have a lot of settlement to take, so they will not be bothering us for a very long time. So it's not that risky. Our diplomat over here, I'm going to send towards the Woodland Realm. Oh yeah, that was actually right there. That doesn't matter. Alright, so the th settlement I have fixed my eye upon is the Onasanar, which lies over here. And I guess we can just end the turn. 
You're definitely going to see Gimli in a lot of action, but I'm just keeping him in airbar for the meantime, just to save some money. We're going to take a look at how our economy is going at the moment, because I believe we are barely losing any money, or perhaps we're barely earning money. But of course, we did invest in those two mines, which is going to bring us a lot of money in not too long. And it's going to be our main priority. Because when building those mines, you can basically just... You can fund your whole army. Mario Reclaim, nice. Good job. Right, match celebration. Unit recruitment completed. Right, so we got another of these guys. Alright, I am going to send these guys right here and for the next turn I'm going to recruit the Dale Cavalry and I'm just going to hit Anasanar straight away. So that's going to be a nice ride. Now these guys we might want to reinforce with, but let's just... They're actually going to be able to get there in time. So I am actually going to send them over there. And we're going to start the recruitment of some more Erebor infantry. This is the Axe God of Erebor. I just thought I should take a very quick look at that. Gimli has it as his bodyguard. And you can only recruit them like very... Not very often. So you're getting this one unit in the early game. But they're definitely worth it. They have 13 missile attack. 22 total defense. And 10 melee attack. And they're effective against armor. Like, they're just a super unit, to be honest. Alright, so with the board is actually a rebel settlement over here. But I'm just going to let Gundabad spend their troops at trying to take with the board, so we'll not bother with that. Now we want to bring Thorin a little bit closer. And let's build another watchtower. I will build watchtowers over here eventually, when we have the money. Alright, let's see what the world will bring to us. We're just going to hope that that Dwarven army doesn't get attacked. Oh, it looks like they have actually left some some units outside. Captain Radnag. That could be... Oh, uh, we can't actually attack him. I was really hoping to get a very cheeky battle off right there. And there we go already. That's wonderful. We're just going to siege them out and we're going to attack the next turn. We are... <laughs> we're making like 28 gold coins. That's not really much. Let's get this guy over here. I suppose we could send the Arabar infantry up as well. Even though we're going to lose money, we will be able to make a lot of money once these mines finish. We're going to get... Like 800 almost from those and the same from these. At least 1,500. That's going to be a massive boost to our income. Now let's try to get an alliance and some trade with these guys. They accepted the trade. Now let's see if they're going to accept. No, we cannot agree. No, they're not. Another proposition. We're happy to listen. All right, we're going to go for the Welshman now. Let's end the turn and let's see if we are going to get a battle. If they actually attacked us now, that would be wonderful. If they just sell it out. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, then we'll at least see the settlement and have a nice battle. Uh, and if they do attack, that's just... Wow, they're actually going right through us. That's weird. That's very weird, to be honest. Well, Radnag... Yeah, we'll have to deal with him right after we have taken on Asanar, but that's just awesome. We'll be able to bring down these guys very easily at this point, and then we will be able to take this army when it's all alone. We got these guys now. Let's get some more Dale Cavalry. Let's build another Watchtower right here, and we will get to Erebor the next turn. Alright, we're now losing money, but that will be changed in this turn. 
Alright, so I will see you on the battlefield. Let's take a look at these guys when we hit the battlefield. We are here. King Dane himself with the Sons of the Fall are leading the ram himself. Because, of course, Dane is renowned as a great warrior in the Lord of the Rings. Now, we... Because a lot of you guys don't know this, but if you have not read the the books, uh, the Hobbit books, or just a lot of the rings, I believe it's in the appendix, you will actually figure out that it was indeed a a Dane that killed Asog long before the Battle of the Five Armies. A little spoiler right there. But it was not Thorin, and Asog was dead by the time we had the Battle of the Five Armies. Now we're going to take a look at the Sons of the Fallen. 34 total defense. Let me repeat that. 34 total defense. That's out of this world stat. Just, it's so, it's just so amazing. They have 20 armor. So, they are of course very vulnerable to armor piercing. But even with the armor piercing, they're still monsters. And they have 13 attack. That's just, yeah, this unit is definitely an elite unit. Now the Ballista Towers were, of course, buffed in this version and we're really seeing this now. Now I think I should just take a look at some of our, our other units as well. We have the Dwarven Laborers. This is like the trash unit for the Dwarves, but they're not really trash, they're definitely a good unit. They have 11 total defense, 5 charge, and they are effective against armor. So that's, that's pretty nice. They are armor piercing specialists, so definitely use them for that. Now we have the Erebor Infantry. 14 total defense, 9 attack, 4 charge bonus, pretty decent stats, indeed they are. So they are a little bit better than Dwarven Laborers, but they're not armor piercing, but they will definitely hold the line. Now we have the Iron Hills Mattox. They are a dual, or actually they are, they're holding one axe, and they are effective against armor. 7 attack, 6 charge bonus, 11 total defense, they are quite armored, but they're very susceptible to miss like crossbows and such. They will definitely lose some men to that. So that's... Yeah, and we also have the Dale Cavalry. A simple cavalry unit. I'm going to go into more detail about them later. Now we are facing some... Some strong units here. The Mountain Guard. The Bodyguard for Orcs of Gundabad. We have definitely seen them in the Angmar and the... Isengard campaign already. In the battle for... Karaskalathorn, these guys came attacking Saruman with like 6,000 orcs. And in the Siege of Gundabad, we saw them in the Angmar campaign. So if you haven't watched that, go and take a look. It's definitely some nice campaigns. Now, I am going to send up the Iron Hills Mattox to deal with the Mountain Guard. Because they have a huge armor set. I'm also going to send up an Erebor Infantry. Uh, actually, both of them, just to be able to surround the snow spears if that becomes a problem. Now, the Sons of the Fall is going to take most of the hits because they can replenish, and they're just a very, very excellent unit. I just love the Dwarven, Dwarven speaker. It just he's quite funny to be honest. Now, these guys are quite far behind. Let's just see if these guys actually do anything. No. Let's just speed it up and see, see them coming in. Now, today we're going to have an extra long episode just because it's the start of the campaign. And it would be nice to see some real progression already today. Now, let's take a look at the Snow Arc Spears. They don't rely much on their armor. So we definitely want the Sons of the Fall to meet them. And the Mountain Guard, on the other hand, relies very much on their armor. They have a very huge uh, attack stat as well, but these guys have a lot of armor, so they're definitely going to be a nice unit to send against the Mountain Guard. Alright, so we're just going to place them right here for the time being, and we're soon going to... Actually, we could just send them in right now, and we'll be able to send these guys around and just flank. We do want to take as few casualties as possible because we are indeed going to rush Gundabad and to do so we definitely need to just bring down as many as we can uh, today and we just need to rush those settlements. 
Now these guys are not uh, very, like they have a huge attack so they will work very well, but most of their stats comes of course from the defense, so they will hold for a very long time. Alright, let's see if these guys, yeah they're finally coming in. I think I'm going to send these guys in over here against these guys. And we're going to see if we can be able to send the Iron Hills Mattox all the way around to completely surround the Mountain God. By the way, this settlement looks pretty nice. Definitely a nice settlement, yeah. It's even that entrance into the mountain. Alright, so you guys go over here. They can actually be used in shield wall, which isn't a very nice... You don't really want to use the shield wall, except for when you're pushing with mass. And the dwarves are masters at that, so we're definitely going to use that. Now, these guys haven't lost a lot of uh, dwarves already. Now, where is uh, King Dane? Let's just take a look out for him. Can't really see him in... Yeah, he's in the middle, that's perfect. Alright, I'm actually just going to put them in shield wall just to be able to make make them do the pos like position I want. When we start attacking these guys from the flank as well, that's going to be a huge bonus for us. Alright, let's just bring them over here. And now it's time to hit these guys in the rear. Let's bring in the Iron Hills Mattox as well. Now, Dane still haven't lost a single, single man. Now, where is the Mountain Guard? They're over here, so we're going to send these guys all the way around. Just to be able to bring down that large armor stat. Because they could potentially become a threat to the Sons of the Fall. Not re really a threat, but they could definitely do some damage. And why not flank when you have the ability to do so? Let's just bring them in over here. And there we go. And hit the... Uh, Mountain guy now. It looks like they mostly hit the Snorlax Spears, but at least they are surrounded. Now let's bring in these guys as well, and let's use the ability. We haven't lost 2%, they've lost like 50, so this is going very well. Alright, let's just send these guys in. Let's use our mass to just completely surround these guys. And it's going to be an easy victory. But the Mountain Guard definitely a strong unit. You don't want to underestimate the Orcs of Gundabad. They're not like other Orc factions. They're very strong uh, Orcs, indeed. Definitely Uruks. And there he goes. Radlak, I believe it was. Sagug, it was. Alright. Radlak was the other army. Now you just saw how few the Sons of the Fallen actually lost right there. That should say something about their power. And these guys are indeed the dwarves remaining from the Battle of Azun Azanul Bizar. There we go. Eighty lost. Sons of the Fallen doing the most work. Iron Hills Mattox also very well. Now where is the oh yeah. Alright. So that's the first settlement captured. And the reason I went for this instead of Wittebog. It's because Wittebord got a very large garrison, and why should we use our troops to take them out when Gundabad can do that and lose units? And then we can just snatch it easily from them. That's a much more solid plan in my opinion. Now the other army remaining will have to try to deal with them very quickly. And I believe, let's just sack this place. And we can, yeah, we should probably rebuild this just to make them a little bit more happy once we leave the settlement. We're going to see about it, if they become mad or not. Let's check the culture. Ah, uh, it's actually a lot of dwarven. That's very nice. And we definitely need troops already. So in my opinion, we should already just go for... Now, let's see what will... Yeah, this is definitely nice. It's going to give us free upkeep and it's going to give us two new units. Even though the mines is a very nice alternative as well. And we can actually afford it. 
Hmm. Yeah, that is actually a little... Yeah, I'm going to go for the mines and I will go for the Orkani Town Hall, Clan Hall, right after. Alright, so now we want to make sure we take out the Radnag. I'm just going to leave one of those. Alright, they got the bold champions. Definitely a nice way to get rid of these guys. Alright, so we're going to be able to surround these guys completely. Uh, I will see you quickly on the battlefield. Alright, so we're going to do the usual strategy. Hitting them and making them attack us because they have the favorable position. We're going to take up on the hill over there. And we're just going to charge our cavalry right into their arches. See if we can bring someone down and hopefully they will be tempted to attack us at this point. Now it will be useful to hit the general as well. Try to get him dead so that they will easier route. Now that was a very poor charge. These, this Dalen Cav is not a very good cavalry. But of course they are cavalry so they will do some damage even though they are a bad cavalry unit. Because as I always repeat... Cavalry is so overpowered in this game. There we go, that was a nicer charge. The Snow Orc Scout is the usual arch unit for the Orcs of Gundabad, and they're definitely a much better arch unit for Orcs in than the usual Orc Arches. Alright, the Snow Orc Spears are going to come, but let's we can do one more charge. And that was a very nice charge. Even though some of them went a little bit too much over there. Now let's see if they're tempted into attacking us now. They should start following us over there. But we're just going to use the potency in this cavalry. Now for the remnants of Angmar campaign. Uh, when we hit the victory conditions we're going to get a new faction there as well. And I am going to set up a faction world. Once that happens, so that you can vote for a new faction. Alright, let's see if they will actually follow. Yeah, they are going for the bait. The stupid AI has followed. Now, let's try to find a general and just get him down. Now, I, do, I have not been looking out for the general before. But it looks like it could be... Yeah, we're going to see that once. We, yeah, it's probably this guy. So, we're going to hit those guys. Now, the bulk champions will have to be dealt with, they're armor piercing and definitely a very strong unit. So we do want to make sure we watch out for them. So the plan with them is just to completely surround them. Because they are monsters. Now we're going to get a charge into both of their units. Perhaps the general is going to get charged. No, it doesn't look like it. Now we're going to fight in inside a lot of settlements. So just using our cow to the full the advantage is just full potential is just useful in this kind of situation. But these guys have been getting a lot of nice charges. You see, they have a pretty decent stat. Now I'm tempted to just send in the Sons of the Fallen, and actually we can just send in the whole army and just completely surround them. Alright, let's completely send them in. So, the bulk champions, they are a halberd unit, so they will have to be surrounded. And that will be and that will be it. They will be easy to surround. There we go, another nice charge. Let's get them out again. Now Dane is signalizing his coming. Beautiful. But we should definitely get the general down. It will be much easier to take down these units. Alright, let's give them another charge once again. Can't really see the general at this point. Now, if he hits them, we need two other units as well. But the... The airborne infantry, yeah, that's a perfect unit against those. And over here we're going to use the Dwarven Labors, which is effective against armor, to deal with the bold champions. Another nice charge, it looks like. Definitely. Let's get them out. And of course, the Iron Hills Mattox, which will tear apart the armor of the Bolt Champions. Now, that's beautiful. Airborne Infantry from this side. These guys from this side. So, the Dwarves are a very slow faction. They are much slower than most 
other factions. Now these guys, yeah, they're coming in from here. And these guys are just going to be dealt with the cavalry. Now the bog champions are going to get a lot of hits on us early on. Let's just take a quick look at their stats. We have seen it before, but 13 attack, 21 total defense, armor piercing. Very, very strong unit. Definitely going to lose some man in the early game to these guys. But surrounding them is going to work our way. And it's time to send in these guys. And with the Iron Hill Matox in the back of these guys, they will fall apart quite quickly, I have no doubt. And the general is now stuck in melee as well. We're going to see a nice charge from these guys, it's going to be exciting. Alright. Cavalry is also very important so that we will be able to capture the routing troops. A lot of these tips I give a lot um, very often. But we get a lot of new viewers all the time, so it's just important to repeat those chips. We might want to run these guys a little bit closer, just to completely surround them. And they're definitely going to go down at this point. Now let's give these guys a charge and just bring them down once and for all. Now these guys are already routing. So after these guys have charged, I'm going to go and capture those units. There we go. Beautiful. And we can speed it up at this point. And there the enemy general goes down. Very successful battle. Only lost 6%. And we met some elite units as well. You're not going to be able to outrun any units to be honest. If you do not do this kind of... Yeah, even with that tactic you will not capture them completely. Let's just get rid of them all. Get some extra coins. And these guys I suppose just get them as well. Or they will not return because they're less than 30, so it's okay. 51 lost, 553 killed. Uh, DL Cavalry, most kills. Very good. Now we're just going to head straight back to Anasanar. We're going to head straight for Dane's Halls. And we're going to sack the Mountain Halls, which the Goblins have now taken up. We're going to bring back the Mighty Halls to our kingdom. Because there was indeed our halls once. And Dane himself is going to to take them back. Alright. Let's bring them down. There we go. And we can actually even bring him back. That's just perfect. And you are going to go to Anasanar. And in the next turn we're going to be able to just bring out the army already. So we're actually making money now. Uh, which means I'm tempted to actually send these guys up here. I'm going to put Gloin inside. And these guys are going to go with King Dane himself. Now we're losing one again. But remember the mines is soon to be completed. So it's going to be a nice ride. Alright. Let's find the Whalesmen and get some trade with them. Yeah, we can just do it with the fort next turn. Alright, let's end the turn. Really happy with this start, turning out very well so far. But we'll see what will happen. Of course they might assemble a great host and just send it straight towards us. But we do have the army at the moment to face them. Now we can't recruit any units because we're going in we're going in negative in money soon. Alright, let's see. Alliance, Anden Whale and Wooden Realm. Alright. Gloin is going to go inside. We're just going to head out straight away. And the insults is right here. Very wealthy region. These guys are actually kind of mad. We can't build that. We definitely do want to build this because it will give us a more public order. Yeah, public order. I think it will not work since it's broken. Now let's try to get an alliance with the Whalesmen as well. I do not believe. All right, let's just go for trade rights. Let's not take this Wow. Well, None of these guys are very welcoming to us. That's a bit sad. 
Now Thorin is finally oh, going to I get inside here. And that's going to raise our money again. Wow, that's nice. Alright, let's end the turn. Yeah, let's end the turn. This is nice for a change. Like, in the Isengard campaign, I had to fight like 10 battles in every turn. Now it's just very simple. And there's not a lot to manage. And it's just very refreshing. Because playing a campaign for a long time makes you tired, to be honest. Alright. Let's build another watchtower. Let's head straight for the insoles. We got some Dale Cavalry here. Let's just get all the units we can. Now, let's send these guys over here. They're still a little bit mad over here. Only one turn now, and we're going to be getting a lot of money. Ah, if we actually... If we just give them map info, they're going to give us some military units. Let's see what we got. Two units of Dale and Woodsman. Oh, that's quite unlucky, to be honest. At least we'll be able to send these guys up here and just have a little bit more of a garrison. I don't think we need these guys at this point. And we can just like send the Axe Guard right after. I think I'm going to keep them there for this turn though. And these guys will reinforce. Alright, end the turn again. Now we're just going to hope that they don't have a super stack uh, ready to attack us. But usually Gundabad is very occupied with the Whale of Anduin. So we're going to just cross our fingers for that. And let's hope it works out in our way. I'm not going to go for this now, we're going to wait a little bit. They have actually sent two units out on their own. That's a gift to us. Mines and mines. And we're now making solid money again. And it will be even more in a little bit. With the body still untouched. Not very weird. Now we want to save up for these mines. But we will not be able to build them in a little bit. Or we're not going to be able to build them in a little while. So, But I'm going to just save straight up for it. So what I'm going to do in the meantime is just to get a stone workers hall. That's just going to reduce this cost of like 765. So it, since we cannot really do much in the meantime anyways. Or actually we could... Build the ironmongers, which will give us even better armor, and it will give us some dwarven laborers. But we'll not make a lot in those turns, so it's actually going to be worth it to build those stone workers' hall. Let's just go for it. And the tax is, yeah, it's at its max. At least if we want them to be happy. Alright, I'm going to fight these battles off camera just because they're not really interesting. And I'm just going to take them out one by one. Just making it as easy as possible. And I will see you right after both of these battles. This is the side that meets you. We have lost only 3%. We just use our cavalry. Very efficient. And we're now just capturing them all. We don't want anyone to be outside. Or get inside the Gundabad, I mean. So let's just capture them all. And I'm going to defeat the other army in a second as well. And there they go. It was actually a second army behind as well, but it was just like one unit of snow craters. So we just defeated two we units. We have won here today. But we only lost six. These dwarves are overpowered. But of course... Gundabad is supposed to be a real enemy, it's just when we are rushing them like this, they're just not able to set up properly. And you can really just rely on a very nice start because you will be able to bring down levels, a, a lot of settlements very quickly. And it will just set up properly. 
So that's going to be a huge advantage for you in the long run. And there we go. Oh, there have actually an army right outside. Can we even? Uh, I was hoping we could actually capture Dane's halls as well in this turn. That would have been magnificent. At least we'll be able to bring down another army, which is just right outside. But again, I'm just going to fight this off camera because I think I can bring you a lot of more value for this episode if I show you the real battles. So I will see you right after this battle. Alright, they're gone. We lost a little bit of men, but they had a lot of numbers, so it's to be expected. And there the general goes down. Some beautiful work, but most of our daily cavalry is now gone completely. So let's exit the battle. Let's see how many we have left. Uh, I mean healed a lot actually, 28, so that's very, very good. Now let's see Dane's Halls. They have already lost a sufficient now amount of orcs and we're sending some Axe Guard on its way. So I think we're going to be able to succeed in taking Dane's Hall as at this point. Let's see how it goes. Now this is a cool picture of Mirkwood, indeed. Except for that Gandalf is actually there. Alright, let's uh, try to ransom these guys. I'm not going to accept that. And now they're just left alone with these few orcs. Let's just start besieging them. And these guys will be there in two turns. As well as the cavalry will be there in two turns. That's wonderful. Now we're already building here and we are going to start saving up for some mines here as well, I suppose. Yeah, actually I'm just going to save money at the moment. However, grain change is also a good idea. And the ironmongers. No, I'm going to save, I'm just going to save it, save right up for the mines. Over here we are, yeah. Alright. Now we might perhaps want to do this just to get some more public order. And let's just end the turn. And let's see what will happen in Middle Earth. It's the seventh turn. And we are besieging Dane's Halls. Not bad, not bad. Now I will cover more faction guides, but it's going to be a little while. I have a lot of school at the moment and they will come eventually, but it's probably going to take a while. Captain Lundberg, yeah, they just don't really have any reinforcements, do they? And these guys are almost there now. I'm actually going to just bring these guys together, make them a little bit more safe. Oh, very good. These guys are still quite mad. Yeah, I'm tempted to send Gimli on its way now, um, either for Garrison or just to make him a little bit closer. Alright, let's not do anything here. Mine's two turns. They're going to get a pretty large Garrison, not too much. We are going to lose some men here though, but we do have reinforcements on our way. Thrak, Conqueror of Dane's Halls. Alright, so they got the Orc Defenders, which is relying very much on their armor, to be honest. And they have a decent attack, though. They got these guys and the other units we are familiar with. So I will just see you on the battlefield, I think. Alright, we are here. Dane's Halls. A wonderful settlement. Even though there's a little bit of fog here. So you're not going to be able to look at the whole of this settlement. But you see, it's giant and these dwarves right here, very wonderful. Now this, wow, and there, the dwarven gate goes down, beautiful. Now let's just pause it a little bit, or actually we're just going to rush in troops at this point. And I'm going to show you more of the settlement in a moment, don't worry. Now we're just going to rush in our troops because foolishly they have decided to just stand at town center. Which is honestly very, very stupid. Yeah, they're just holding it completely. Now, let's just take a look. 
These trees, just look at the detail, it's just so wonderful. And this particular dwarf, just look at it, like, it's the falls outside of his mouth, that just awesome. Now inside here, we got like these giant dwarven statues, very, very beautiful in my opinion. Now, they are already sending in some arrows, so let's just rush at them, we're going to completely surround them, and the mountain guard will be targeted with the Iron Hills Mattox. Oh, they're actually sending some nice arrows into the middle here. So we m want to make sure we actually don't just send all our units the same direction. We're just going to run them over here. We can probably get our cavalry over here and try to silence these guys. Yeah, they're going to, going to get a couple of kills, but it won't really matter. Now, let's go then, you, the legendary warrior. Alright, let's get these guys up. And there we go, a nice charge into the orc defenders. Now, we're actually going to use our dwarven labors for this part, because they are armor piercing. And these guys we might want to save. Let's try to just... Actually we could just place them inside there and see if we can are actually going to be able to capture the town center. Let's just... Oh, they're still targeting us. Let's get these guys over here very quickly. Let's charge around with these guys. And these guys I completely forgot about. Keep going over here boys. Actually, it is these guys who want it, and they're just standing there, perfect target to be honest. I don't know how well the charge is going to be, but it's actually a very nice charge indeed. And these guys are going to hit here now, let's get the Mattox up, and hit the Mountain Guard, definitely. Right, these guys, one of them going there, the other one's just... These guys are actually armor piercing, or not the Snow Orc Scouts, but yeah, these guys can actually hit the Snow Orc Scouts and the Orc Defenders, it's fine. We are just going to be able to surround them anyways. You're going to do some charges over here. And the Mountain Guard is stuck right here, so we're going to be able to completely flank them up, which is awesome. You guys can go around here. Well, this was a very foolish defense. Actually, you can defend this place properly with just placing some troops up over here. You get activate these arrow towers, and you can also hold them over here. But the best point is to just hold them at the gate, to be honest. That's where I usually hold them. Now, spears are not the ones we want to target. Let's get these guys completely around. Where is the mountain guard? You go for the mountain guard. Alright. And you start hitting the Orc Defenders. We've lost 11%. It's going to be a much even, more even battle at this point. They have a proper settlement. But we are going to surround them, so the process from here will be pretty quick. Now we got some dwarves stuck over there. That's fine. Now these guys are not targeting the ones I wanted. These, the Mountain Guard are kind of just... Yeah, they really got in over there. Let's get another charge right here. Actually, the Erebor Infantry is going to go straight for the Snow Orc Spears, which is a much better target. And then the Dale Cavalry will be able to just charge these guys, which is much better than charging Spears. Oh, that's a wonderful charge. Look at them go. And now you hit the Snow Orc Spears. Dane is on in the very thick of the fight, so this could potentially go very wrong, but we're going to... I think he's going to be fine. He should be around here somewhere. Let's hope he's not, he's not in the thick of the fight. Oh, he's actually on this side. And he's killing orcs. The true warrior it is, indeed. Now let's get some more, more of these orc defenders. We're just punching a hole straight into them now. Yeah, they're starting to lose a lot of men at this point. And another great charge. 
Dale Cavalry not to be underestimated. They definitely bring the cavalry you need as a dwarf because they're never going to get the gold cavalry. That's just in the movies. That never happens in the books. The dwarves don't really like using mounts. And I'm glad it stays that way. The dwarves, if they had cavalry, they would just be way too overpowered. They have everything they need, to be honest. Or their infantry, at least, is very strong. They do not have proper archers, except for very good crossbows. And you could say their archers is decent. Now these orc defenders have been completely killed off and then these guys are going to be able to go and surround the snow orc spears. I'm actually thinking that's way better at this point. And King Dane is also saved for the meantime. Right, let's just run these guys straight through and then we're going to be able to surround these guys. Now these guys are actually completely idle over here. And to be honest, that's not too bad. Let's just send them straight in and just completely surround this unit. And now just hit the mountain guard, everyone, and we're going to just eat this up like a donut being eaten by a policeman. Let's see. Yeah, King Dane in his true glory. Indeed, King Dane, a lot of you might not know about this, but during the War of the Ring, at the siege of Minas Tirith. About the same time there's a giant siege at Erebor and Dale where a large large Easterling force is fighting the dwarves and the Easterlings. That is like it would have been very cool to see that in the movies but of course they didn't have place for everything. But that's definitely a pretty cool feature which happened in the, uh, in the books. Like it's not written much about but it's just barely described. And there he goes down. Set the god to hell. Jesus, I love that sound. The dwarves are so cool. Let's just slaughter them all. And Dane's halls are taken back in the name of King Dane. 364 lost. Ah, oh, the Sons of the Fallen doing some heavy work. The Dwarven laborers and the Erebor infantry. But all performing very well. Uh, let's see who, yeah, the Dwarven Labors took, uh, took a hit, of course. Dwarven Labors as well, Iron Hill Mattox as well, but they all paid for themselves. <laughs> Alright, that's beautiful. And at the Battle of the Mountain, it's called, where um, the Eastlings as assault Erebor and Dale, King Dane comes out from his own gates. Or at the gates, he defends the dead king of Dale. I believe it's King Brand. I don't re quite remember. I believe it's King Brand, and that's and he's just fighting to his death. But even as he's like 250 years old, he's still doing so well. Let's just sack it. Liberator of Dane's halls. And at this point, we should definitely make a lot of money, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, all right. Let's. That's perfect. Now these guys will be reinforcements in one turn. And we're already making 5 grand. And it's the 8th turn. Wow, let's check it out. Oh, we got so much culture here as well. Now if we get the pipe pole, we'll get a lot more upkeep. At this point, I believe we should just go for the ironmongers. It's going to give us coins. And we'll be able to recruit dw dwarven laborers right outside. On the other hand... I'm going to go for this one. We'll get free upkeep and two new units. But that's definitely good. Uh, can we... Just going to build a quick watchtower right here. And this guy, Lundbag, should probably just be dealt with. Alright, all right, I'm just going to quickly fight this off camera and I will be right back. That was quick process. Let's go. Now we should probably just hold dance halls for now. Let's scout out the waters. 
see what Gundabad has to offer. I'm going to recruit a spy um, to be able to kind of scout out the area and see, yeah, as I said, what we are up against. Nice picture of Eskaroth. Uh, it looks to be at least. Let's execute them. And we're at least going to wait for these guys. Alright, so let's get the spy. There we go. And you are going up here. And I suppose why not just send this guy up here as well. Just to scout out. He can probably work as a spy for the meantime. And we can actually recruit these guys and not. Yeah, it's quite long, but still, that's a nice feature. Alright, Gimli will be able to get there in the next turn and we're just saving up for the mines even though we're going to build the Orkani Hall here it's going to be worth it because we need units here now I, I, I'm actually hoping to assail Gundabad today that would be very very cool but uh, we'll have to see we might not have the force to do so and that would but that would definitely be a real challenge they would probably get a way too large garrison for us to be able to handle that. Alright. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just build a watchtower right here. And Rakeberg lies here. Oh, they have a pretty large garrison. So yeah, I think we just want to be defending here for the meantime. Alright, we got the agent now. Something to we're actually happy when Gimli is right there. Let's send these guys over here. I'm not going to use more than one general in an army. That's my rule, kind of. Ah, oh, we can get the mining network now. Excellent. And that means we have some extra money to spend. I'm probably going to go for the pipe hole. Just to get another free upkeep unit. Um... I do hear that there is a football match outside my house. There's not much I can do about it. I'll just have to continue on. Now, where's our spy? He's right here. Oh, they do have a large army there as well. But these guys have taken Framsburg, which is wonderful. Or they at least hold it. I think they hold it in the early game as well. Now let's see what these guys do. I, I'm actually really hoping they do attack the insults. One more turn and we'll have the mines. I think that's it for this turn. Uh, these guys could probably head up here now. We just want to get some more units over here. We don't have any archers in our army. Not that it is of concern, but it's it would be nice to get just some archer capabilities. But these guys are mostly trash. The Dalen, I, be call, I believe it's called Woodsmen, they're just not a very good unit. Remnants of Angmar trying to bribe us, wow. Already. Hornburg Siege. You will be rewarded with one of the best units currently available. But what if we actually... You wish to speak to me? Do you seek an audience? What if we actually took these guys out? You, but not, would you wish to speak to me? Yes, my king. They won't care on the inside. Because they got Nagog and they got Grublik. But with this force we should be able to bring them down. And we'll have Gloin over here. Now that was a very nice boost to our income. Can't recruit any useful units at the moment. Have to wait for the mines. Let's get the mining network here next. We'll soon be able to get it as well. And we are building the Orkani Hall now, which is useful. Now, I think I'm going to... Yeah, we can't. We gotta leave some units behind at least. Let's check what we see up here. 
They got almost no units. They got more other chief Garsag over here though. If we were able to hold out Dane's Halls and at the same time go for Gundabad, that would have been the optimal solution. But I don't think we have the force to do so. Rakjaberg. Could we kind of trick these guys into attacking us though? That might have been possible. We do have a river crossing here, which we definitely could have used. I'm going to try to risk that. I'm going to take our elites. Alright, we we'll just bring our units and we'll see if they will go for the bait. And we'll bring in Gloin here in one turn. We'll see if they go for the bait and if they do not, we'll have to attack them. But this looks very much like they could want to attack us. And we have these Axe Guard and we do have some cavalry. And a bridge battle is always favorable. We do have some archers, but I think we'll, we'll be able to pull that battle off. Alright, let's hope they do. Okay, and our spies here and our diplomats here. So I think they can't do much in the meantime. Let's end the turn, let's hope they go for the bait. That is going to be a challenging battle nonetheless, because they have like two generals, but it would be very, very nice. No, they didn't go for the bait, that's annoying. Uh, but this guy actually sell it out, so if we attack him, they are going to sell it out, of course. No, jeez, alright, I was not supposed to do that. Yeah, it works out. Let's bring our army and let's take them on the field, boys. And we can actually bring in Gloin as well, just because he's... Because I will always uh, be able to play with multiple generals if they are in different armies. That's my rule. So if we bring... Yeah, this is probably going to cause some bad reputation. But we'll be able to get them back in one turn or in the same turn. So that doesn't matter. Can we take these guys out? Yeah. And we'll be able to recruit more units here in one turn. However, let's just check out Barsical while we're here. Yeah, they are completely left alone over here. Alright, let's bring down Shagdush. It's going to be a tough battle. But it will definitely be worth it. And there we go, let's execute them. And let's see what will happen with Rakeberg at this point. Yeah, they're left with those. And can these guys... Let's just... Yeah, we'll have to assault them. And you will probably just have to stand inside. Yeah, that will be fine. I think we actually forgot those guys. Wow. Alright, I'm not even going to fight that battle. And that's Brackeberg. Yeah, that will be fine. You can just leave those there. And these guys will be inside in the next turn. And we now... It looks like we're boarding. Do you seek yeah, it looks like we're boarding. Yeah, the will of Anduin. That's just excellent. Now they can only attack us from this side, and we will be there with a large army. So we have covered that ground. Beautiful. Let's just get these guys. Mining network next turn. We'll have it, and the Orkani halls. Will we have? We will have. The next one as well. This is just wonderful. This campaign is turning out so well at the moment. Now let's just head straight for Gundabad. We'll have two more units from Dane's Halls. We're not going to allow them to build up properly. We're going to siege out Barsakul with Gloin and a couple of units or yeah 
Probably not. We'll have to see. We don't have that many units. I'm gonna stick you. They have a solid garrison there. Wonderful. Now I'm going to wait a little bit with this. Organic clan hall. And that's yeah, two more units in one turn. Now we probably do want to get a couple more units still. So I'm just thinking about going for the Ironmongers for now. We'll get some uh, more money, another unit as well. Definitely worth it. Alright, you head out. Glowing, you hold Dane's Halls. And they're still mad though. Uh, that's a bummer. Yeah, Glowing is not really doing much. Or it doesn't really work out. We're at least happy over here. Alright, let's just have them here one more turn. We'll get some free upkeep as well. Let's merge some units. Yeah, that's the armor upgrade gun, but it's fine. And let's just wait for one of those units. And let's see if, if we leave the next turn, it will be fine. Versical is completely empty. I'm gonna stick. I can greet you, but not serve you, Lord. And you guys are going to go over here and take a real look over here what's happening. They do have some forces here at least. But I'm just going to ke keep a watch over yes. Marauder Chief Gorsog. And I think we'll be fine. Still a couple of turns, but not way too long. These guys can recruit. Uh, we can actually have another free upkeep. We do actually have upkeep for three units. And we are building stuff here, but we probably want to focus on some buildings here. We're building here and we're building here, so I guess... And we're making a lot of money, so why not just strengthen the garrison over here? Let's just get those units. Would you wish to speak to me? And Gloin. Yeah, if we just take out Wittybod, like they can't really do much about it now. But... Our main focus is still going to be on Gundabad. We'll have to take that settlement later. Right, let's end another turn. We'll now get some Orkan units recruited from the east. They actually come from, yeah, the most south you can really find on the map. You can't even see the Red Mountains at this map because it's so far away. Right, there we go. Let's see. Kirikathal and here still no units and they all have free upkeep wonderful one more turn until we got the Orkani clan hall here as well now let's see if we can actually leave my king orders I I sire no, they are going to be really mad. Okay, that's all right. That's fine. We can we can do that. That compromise. What, a, what about these guys? Though? No, they gotta stay. And let's just head straight for Gundabad. Now, where does this army go? Yeah, they're getting pushed back over here as well. Something to investigate. They shall not see. Can't really see any units here. We'll be at war with Angmar soon. <laughs> wow, in the second episode. Alright, but this is very nice. Let's just end another turn then. And our economy is very strong. Because of Dane's Halls. Eventually we'll have some very nice units in Dane's Halls. The reason you want to go for Gundabad straight up, simply because they will not be able to resist your forces. Except this one. Ah, they just sent a, a gift to us, letting us take out uh, army without a general. And they have Bulg's champions as well. 
nice going to be able to just bring down those. But I'm going to fight this battle off camera, another battle without any particular point. And of course we're going to, this is going to be a one and a half hour long episode, just a real start with this faction. So I'll just see you right after. Alright, we won, they actually tried to retreat in the, like in the end. But we lost 23% and killed 89 and all the bulk champions are gone, so it was a very excellent battle. Could potentially have been a little bit better, but we still didn't lose a lot of Axe Guard and the real elites. Dane took some real casualties, but I just threw him against the... Yeah, that's fine. Uh, against the... Against uh, <laughs> the Gundabad, um The champions. I just couldn't remember the name at this point. Bold champions. But uh, yeah, so we are going to be able to just push f straight for Gundabad. Let's hope that our force is enough. But I think if we just start sieging them, and then it could potentially become that someone might attack us outside the walls. And that way we could capture Gundabad. Like one of the main points to get Gundabad is that, because, is that you will get the Gundabad guard. Oh, they're just stacking up all the generals inside at this point. Poor people. Let's check over here. Yeah, they are they are screwed. Let's just head straight for them. Let's just stay in the fort for a turn. And we'll get some extra coins. And we got the this one now so we'll be able to recruit some more units and I think we should just get the let's get the practice range as well just get a lot of units out of this place having a recruitment center is kind of important at this point on Asanar let's get units and garrison quarters is we can actually recruit the sons of the fall here when we got the right culture so I think we should get the brewery Kitchen culture increase. And we're building most other places. I believe, yeah, we can get some units here now as well. Can we send these guys out? Yeah, that will be fine. Let's hope they don't sally out here and bring them down. But just imagine if we're actually able to bring down Gundabad in the next turn. That would be something, certainly. Do you have a couple of units here? But these guys are probably My pushing. Speaks highly of you. And I think they don't have any other regions. They have Barsicol. So, like, being able to siege them out at the same time would be very useful. But we don't have the units to do that. Oh, we the bodies our mission. That sucks. Alright. They're probably recruiting lots of units inside of Gundabad now, but that will only play into our hand because they will sally out and attack us. And yeah, looks like they are retreating indeed. Remnants of Angmar. They will probably be at our doorstep quite early on. Let's see if we are already at war with them or not. Imlad is besieged. That's not good. Alright, uh, let's see. No, only the Eastlings of Rune and Dogs of Gundabad. So Angmar, we're not at war with, so we can surprise attack them. And yeah, they have stacked up a couple of units. And the Siege of Mount Gundabad starts in the 15th turn. That's just wonderful. Can we bring out these guys? Yeah, we can actually, that's wonderful. And these guys. No, I think we need Gimli there for the meantime. But these guys can go forth. Can't recruit anyone at the moment. Let's get these guys as well. Let's just... The armies keep streaming. We'll take with the board eventually. These guys are not very happy. Move out! Aye! Forward! Aye! 
that will work, I think. We'll have to take a look at it. With these guys, if they decide to attack, attack us, that would be perfect. But I, I think they're going to get quite a large garrison. And just these troops alone will be a real challenge. They have Black Shield Archers, Orc Avengers, and Orc and Pale Uruks. Wow, this is a real force to be reckoned with. This is no joke. And honestly, do we even have the force to assail this place? Let's hope we do. Six units and basically only elites. One, two, three, four, five. Only five infantry. We got the cavalry though, which will be so useful. Or will it? I don't think it will be much useful in that battle. Alright, let's see if they decide to sally out or not. If we win, if they sally out, it's barely going to be a win though. It's going to be a really close battle, but I think that's what this first episode needs a real challenge. And they are going to sally out. Wow, that is excellent. Marauder Chief Gorzog outnumbering us with only the elites, faction leader, faction heir, and the son of the king, I believe. Wow, this is going to be a hard battle, boys. But we will do what we can. They got the Orc Avengers, which is a very good unit. They're effective against armor, so we're going to struggle. But of course, they rely very much on their armor themselves. And we have these Axe Guard, which I think is going to be very vital. They have the Black Shield Archers. Excellent arch unit. And they have the Pale Uryx. Let's see. They mostly rely on their armor as well. But they also have a very large defense skill. Okay. I'm going to see on the battlefield for this sick battle. Alright, we are here. Outside the gate of the great Gundabad. Now I'm going to charge straight into Black Shield Archers. They're definitely going to be a pain, so just want to bring down their armor values a little bit. But it seems that was a very bad idea, because a lot of our cavalry is going to get caught already. And it doesn't seem they lost too many either. They lost at least 20 orcs. Now, the orc avengers, that's going to be the real pain right here. Uh, for them, we are going to need the... Yeah, these arts will yield nothing to them. So, I guess the orc avengers will definitely use the... The Dwarven Laborers, they're armor-piercing, even though they don't have very good stats. We'll just have to throw them at them, because that's the unit which is most likely to do damage. And we're going to send these guys in very quickly as well, to just try to soak up some, or give them some Javis. Alright, that's another nice charge. Even though they charge back, let's bring them out again. And let's see if we can get these guys. Yeah, they're going to be able to just... Send Javis straight into them, which is wonderful. And these guys should start lining up properly over here. And I'm going to use King Dane for the Pale Oryx, because that's the unit we really want to use for them. Alright, let's use Dane over there. I'm going to explain in a minute. Let's just see what will happen here first. Now we definitely need to hit these archers, they're pain in the ass. And the Snork Spears is the perfect match for the Erebor Infantry. Now hit the Pale Rooks. And the Dalen, these guys will just go over here. And you guys need to focus on these guys. Just keep giving them some hell. Now if these guys are not going to get any reinforcements, just... Actually just go for the Pale Rooks. If we can kill their leader, that's a very nice way to get rid of them. We completely forgot our cavalry, that's very disastrous. We want to keep these guys alive for as long as possible, definitely. And you can just see that these guys are getting teared apart. Let's charge in the Axe Guard, they are armor piercing. Our greatest hope of making a threat to the Orc Avengers. They are just a very powerful unit. That's actually very good. Surprisingly good. These guys actually managed to charge into the Paleux and deal some damage. I had no idea that was even possible. Alright. 
and then you charge in and then you use the ability and you're going to charge these guys. You can actually just hit the Paleryx in their backs or pr probably the Orc Avengers. Let's check who got the least armor. Yeah, these guys, the Paleryx. If we hit them in the back, that's going to yield some damage at least. But they do have, yeah, very strong unity. Let's try to give this Sword Creators a hit. And it's not in our favor at the moment. We'll see what we can do about it though. That was a very nice charge indeed. And these guys are not engaged anymore. Uh, where did the... I can't really see where they went, but... The Paleryx is the perfect matchup for these guys. Because they are armor piercing. And in the meantime, these guys can go around over here and shoot these guys in the back. Hit the Snorlax Spears, help out these Airborne Infantry. Airborne Infantry should be able to held up get nicely against those guys. Give them a proper charge, boys. Come on. We gotta make them really engage here, so we're just going to run them straight through. And then hit them. And that should give them a nice hit. Alright, hit the Orc Snorlax uh, Raiders. They're here. Just give these guys another charge first. King Dane is currently holding up pretty well. Alright, and you gotta go to the Snore Craters. These guys only have like three missed attacks, so they're not going to be very good. But it looks like it's going to work pretty well against the Snork Spears because they don't have much armor. So that's the perfect matchup. That as well. And we need perfect matches up to really be able to pull this off. Let's take a look at their stats, the Paleryx, the faction leader of Gundabad. 17 attack, 10 charge bonus, 24 total defense, 10 armor, 10 defense skill. They are monsters. Orc Avengers we already have taken a look upon. The Paleryx are surrounded. That's at least very good. And these guys, the Snorx Spears are actually struggling quite hard at this point. Some Orc Avengers are going out over here. If they hit the Airborne Infantry, that would actually be quite bad. Yeah, they are doing that as well. Or perhaps not. It looks like they're actually going for a charge on these guys. So we just gotta hit them. Or actually they decide to go over there. Then we just keep hitting these Pelorix. Now, uh, these archers are causing a lot of trouble. Just gotta try to silence them. King Dane has taken a couple of hits, to be honest. Only these guys will be shredded apart by the Orc Avengers. That's a really bad deal for these guys. Alright, try to hit the Orc Avengers. Let's see if we can br bring them some damage when we charge them. Oh, they're going to charge out the Axe Guard. Let's give them a proper counter charge. Oh, that's a nice, nice... Swing at the general. Another beautiful charge. These guys are doing so well. Let's run these guys over here. These Orc Avengers just keep charging. Which could go both ways. They have a very powerful charge. That's nice, getting some hits on them. Even though they have a lot of armor. And there we go, another very good charge. And we're not going to be able to bring any of these down, I think. At least taking some damage on their hit points. The Pale Rooks are really doing some damage over here against Dane. Let's try to really just get him get them in properly. We need to kill the generals, that's our hopes. I'm glad these guys are running away for some weird reason. Now Paleryx is probably the best target. Or should we try to silence these guys that could... No, we should just get rid of their cavalry. Cavalry is almost gone at this point. Let's hit the Snorlax Spears in the back. They're almost at the routing here. Let's hit the Snorlax Scouts now. Give them some hell. Airborne Infantry charging in! And they actually cause some units to route, which is very good. The Pale Urux are at the brink of destruction. And they are struggling now. They're really struggling. This is good. Very, very good. Mm. 
Battle Kazad, come on. 20 left. We just gotta kill the general. You just, like in this battle, it's necessary to absolutely use the units you need to face the proper units. Right, let's run these guys away. I don't want it to be caught by the Arc Avengers. Pelurks have proved to be a deadly unit. Let's try to just shield them a little bit. Now they're going to be able to charge us. We gotta charge back. Or right, it's just going to be really bad. At least we run some of them away. That's going to save us some a little bit. Okay, these guys are actually out of ammo. I'm thinking to just go over here and just occupy them. Even though we're going to completely lose this unit. It's at least going to make them lose a couple of units. And I'm tempted to just save these guys to capture all units we can in the end. Because at this point... <laughs> yeah, it's only four pale rooks left. Wow, that's wonderful. Okay, uh hit these guys now. King Masog is on his way down. Incredible. Now we can actually give these guys a little bit of hell. I'm glad this Orko is just running all the way. And Marauder Chief Gursog is down. So the captain of Gundabad is down. They still have two, one, two left, the Black Shield Archers and they have the Orc Avengers. Now these guys will be perfect up here. Let's get them up here all, all together. And these guys will try to just occupy these guys for as long as possible. Now we want to save this cab. Now can we bring them down? It still remains to be seen. However, if we actually I uh, have changed my mind, we gotta, we gotta um, completely surround these guys. The Orc Avengers is actually quite scared at this point. We're just going to completely surround them. See if that will help us out. Axe God of Erebor. Fighting for their lives. Look at this. Wonderful charge. Into the best looking good the bad unit in my opinion. Definitely a very nice unit to look at. And that's going to be a deadly charge. And we're going to route them entirely. Now let's capture these guys. And there he goes. That should be Marauder Sheaf Gursog again. Wow, that's weird. Uh, it's probably a bug, but it doesn't matter. We even captured the gate, boys. Let's bring them all down. King Dane still has 53 left. That's wonderful. Now the Axe Guard go around here. Now, just the remaining Black Shield Arches is going to be a pain, to be honest. This army will not have many units left at the end. But, uh, oh yeah, of course, they're just going to route. This guy's still capturing this guy. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Alright, let's just bring them down. And we gotta capture these guys as well. Oh, they're actually standing up again but this will be the end of Hazog now we gotta bring down these guys we have taken them all down but at what cost this was a bloody battle it will be remembered aside the battle of Azul Azonol Bizarre and you will take that black ship that's actually they're not going to be remaining anyways and we won boys and girls we won just that's insane that's completely insane now we gotta capture them completely let's bring them yeah we're going to get the settlement we're going to get Gundabad in the first episode how freaking raw is that and just that battle I think I've never done as good first episode ever this was just oh, I'm so happy now guys Alright, let's end it there. Four, 541 loss, 1029 killed. Who's the real heroes here? The Dale Cavalry and the Erebor Infantry. The Dale and Woodsman, surprisingly. That's very good. Wow. They were completely killed off. We should send Dale some tens of thousands while we have them. Alright, this was 
completely excellent. The Dwarven Laborers were slaughtered by the Paleorgs, so. But they, they brought down 19, so. I guess they paid for themselves in some sort of way. I guess it was a charge from the Paleorgs who just slaughtered many of those Dwarves. But we're just going to occupy this place now. We gotta send units immediately and just hold it out. That's incredible. I can barely believe it. Alright, so let's sack it. And the faction is gone. Gundabad no longer exists. And it's just the first episode. That's insane. Mount Gundabad overrun. The power and might of Snowarks was not enough to maintain control over the great mountain of Gundabad. The walls lay in ruin and the deep mansions below the earth have been utterly cleansed. The taint of the sons of Melkor will reside in, it, in this place for many years to come, but the inhabitants are no more. Snowarks retreat. Wow. On my way. These guys look ready for war. Yeah, we're making like 8,000 a turn. Now, there's not really a question about what we should build. We we have like 13 culture here, but we definitely need some culture. Uh, and when we get the Halls of Durin, we'll get the Hammers of Gundabad, which is just the best unit you can feel as a dwarf. Let's get the brewery immediately. And Bursical, yeah, we should head out for it eventually. But at, for now, just... Can we bring out King Dane? Yeah, I just want to keep him safe for the meantime, to be honest. Liberator of Gundabad. Actually, we should just stack up in Gundabad, I think. Much safer. But we gotta let the units keep going. Our next target at this point is going to be Angmar. So, we'll just have to send more units. But I do not know... We'll have to see how long it will take us to bring down Angmar. We'll probably want to take out Bursacle and, and Withybord first. At least Withybord because it's going to make the border much better for us. That's just... wow. Mount Gundabad. This is so incredible. Let's see what we have already built here. Do we have some... Pro no, we only have the camp guard. But this is also a wealthy region, of course. I, I, I just want to keep all of these guys. Just They're just heroes at this point. Do you seek an audience? Now, this dwarven diplomat, the spy will stay on the border of Angmar, just keeping a watch. Rurin, just head over to the... And doing well, and ask for an alliance. And we have an alliance. Wonderful. I must admit that battle was very hard. Like, we barely made it out of it. It could have potentially gone the wrong way. No doubt about it. Alright, they will not get free upkeep. But we can send another unit while they stay there. And our economy is solid strong. I'm just going to finish a couple of turns just to see what will happen. Just because it's the first episode. And you guys are headed for Mount Gundabad. At this point we probably want to get a little bit more of culture. And then bring down Withybord and Bursacol. But we don't have a lot of troops at the moment so Withybord will have to wait. But that Dalen Cavalry definitely saved us. Wow. This even beats... No, actually, in the Isengard campaign we took out Rohan in the 15th turn. So, it's quite equal to the tempo we had in that campaign. Yeah, it will grow now. And you guys will be able to join. And we'll have a nice army right here. I don't think it's capable of taking out burst code just yet. But with these guys it might be possible. Let's see. He's bringing like 300. On the other hand, yeah, he's causing the same. 
which is probably causing some more. Let's see, is he causing some more population growth? Yeah, he's causing more, so it's worth having him inside. Yeah, and I am going actually to keep these guys in the forts just to save the money. Axe God took a hit though, real hit. But I'm just going to, we'll, we will see if they come for us and we'll have the units to be there in time. Now just hit, go down to Castle Doom. Like if we take down Count Doom, that would be our next target I think. We could actually go all the way around the mountain. But this is still going to take a while. We need to build up properly now. Let's get the Erebor Axe Throwers. Can only recruit one of those. And perhaps we should... Let's get the pipe pole first. We already have the money we need, so I think we should focus more on these buildings. These kind of buildings. We have the brewery here now. Mining network, yeah. Like, it's definitely a very good building, but I just want to rush at this point. We have been doing so well with that strategy so far. Move out! I sire! With my king! Yeah, a long time until we can recruit. So we can upgrade this place. At this point, I think we want to send out Thorin soon. When we have another unit there, and just Aye. scout out. Aye. Forward. Aye, sire. Your will, my lord. Actually, leave these guys behind. Forward. Can we bring out Gimli now? Bringing Still, they are going to be mad. But this will bring us a more public order. Aye. Let's bring them over here. I want Aye. Gimli to attack Barsacle. And he will definitely be needed at this point. We need more generals over here. King under the mountain. King Dane, such a glorious general. All right, uh, we're going to end one more turn, perhaps or two. Let's end what two more turns just to see how much we'll earn in Erebor, and then we will call it a day. Now the Angmark uh, campaign will follow tomorrow as usual. I just wanted to record this before the Angmar campaign because I was really excited and it was definitely worth it. It's been one hell of a battle. That battle is one of the closest and most important battles I've ever played. Let's get the Axsmith Guild in Mount Gundabad. Glorian got some respect. Aye, sire. Do today, oh, they're just trash entirely. My king. March. Oh yeah, actually, My let's king. do this. And we'll be able to recruit a lot of units here not too long. Aye. And we just have units so streaming fun. the way over here. Which is wonderful. We're not going to be too happy here, but it's fine. Yeah, our money is skyrocketing to the very top now. Let's just start building stuff here as well. Let's get the brewery. Get the culture up and probably go for a pig farm after that. Actually, we could just go straight for the pig farm. It will give us some more population growth, which we need. Yes, Alright, uh, let's end the turn again. Now the money doesn't seem to be a problem for us at all, but I will definitely go for some real mines eventually. But what I want to focus on is units at the moment, because we have the economy set up. And if we can just properly set up Gundabad, that will be very, very nice. And of course, I do want to get the Dwarven Catapult, the most overpowered unit in the game. Durin's Forge Hall already, wow. What does it do though? It gives us melee weapon bonus, morale bonus to troops trained here, experience bonus, that's wonderful. Drawers of Eredluin, very good. Airbors, axe throwers. Let's just send them all over here. 
Let's put these guys in the bed. And these guys can stay here. And with Gimli, we're probably going to assault Barsicol with the army we have inside here. Alright, there we go. Making like 8,000 a turn. Yeah, very long, very long. Alright, uh, yeah, we can build a mining complex already, but it's going to take such a while and let's probably go for or a county hall at clan hall or should we go for ironmongers let's go for our county clan hall it's going to give us two more units a turn or not a turn but for the time being and in dane's halls we now got the pipe hall, so we'll have free upkeep on Gloin, which is going to give us a lot more money. Now our culture is also increasing. We don't have a brewery though, but it would... Ah, Ballista Maker. A little bit hard to decide here. I think I will go for the Steelmongers, we'll be able to get one more of the Dwarven Laborers out of here. And it only takes like 4 turns, that's not too bad. My king, march! Move out! Alright, and in Gundabad, we are now having the culture increase. But building a pub wouldn't be too bad either. Getting some real fast culture we definitely need and we already have built a lot of stuff here so I think I'm just going to go straight for the pub yeah we're way beyond what we need here we also have a fort we can take over here which is useful all right I'm going to end one more turn so we are at the 20th turn but you see that Erebor is a real money maker 4500 in the 19th turn and if we build the mining complex, it will just skyrocket up once again. Like, Erebor is not one of the most challenging campaigns, but I think it's very interesting. And it's fun playing the dwarves for a change. Just some real infantry. That's really fun. Alright, but that is it for this episode. I think it was a very successful start. We have definitely set up properly here and just look at what we have achieved. We have already brought down Gundabad and we are going to start attacking Angmar in not too long. Definitely need to help the Northern Dundan and of course our brethren, the Dwarves of Ered Luin. So yeah, that's going to be nice. But thank you guys so much for watching this first uh, episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I will definitely try to bring out... Um, as many quality episodes as I'm doing at the moment and I want them to be as good as this one I think it's, it was a really nice episode um, but do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already and support me via Patreon if you'd like and that's it for now so go and watch the Isengard campaign, the Remnants of Angmar campaign Gondor campaign, Woodland Realm campaign I have a lot of campaigns on my channel I also have faction guides do take a look out for those and thank you. So I'll see you guys for the next episode.